tonight, our guest is Rob Melrose from the Alley Theater, Artistic Director. We're so happy you're here. Thanks for joining us, Rob. Yay, thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, well, we're cool. excited that you could join us. So uh, tell us a little bit about where you came from. I'm really interested in Cutting Ball. That was an amazing theater. I did a little reading, and um, yeah. you did some really avant-garde, exciting work, some translations you, you, you did yourself over there, and uh, a lot of... Um, uh, uh, Beckett and uh, tell us a little bit about your history. Strindberg, Shakespeare. Yeah. Yes, we love. yes. that is so good. Um, so, so I grew up in Minneapolis and grew up well as a kid going to the Children's Theater of Minneapolis. And then as I got older, I got went to the Guthrie. And it was a time when um, Garland Wright, well, Lee Chule was the artistic director, then Garland Wright. And they were bringing in these amazing um, kind of uh, um, experimental American directors like Peter Sellers, um, Robert Woodruff, um, Joanna Kalaitis, and then um, really interesting European directors like Andre Servan. And, um, and then, um, then I went to, um, they had a company. So I grew up idolizing the, mm -hmm. the same actors from show to show. And I just loved, loved that. And later in life, I got to go to the Guthrie and direct there and direct, um, I, I got to direct Happy Days with two of my heroes, um, Sally Wingert and Richard wow. Olms. And, and it was just you know amazing to have grown up seeing them and idolizing them and getting to work wow. with them was such a, such a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, went to, I went to Princeton for undergrad and, and had um, a, a lot of contact with the McCarter Theater when Emily Mann, I was there for Emily Mann's first year, hmm. and I got to I got to uh, be her intern on Glass Menagerie with um, wow. Dylan McDermott, Judy Kuhn, and Shirley Knight. So wow. that was amazing, and and um, she was a big influence on me. Um, you know, as a great director, great writer, also someone who believed very much in social justice. I mean, so um, so yeah. that I, I got kind of got a taste of that very early in my career. And, um, and then I went to um, yeah, the Yale School. Well, I, I spent a year in Providence, Rhode Island because my wife, what, Paige, was at the, um, at the, Paige Rogers was at the Trinity Rep Conservatory. Oh, so, yeah, again, yeah. so again, another company, another acting yeah. company. And I got to, got to know them. Brian McElhaney was my acting teacher at, at Princeton. And he, he, you know, I got to watch him um, on stage in Trinity, which was amazing. And then I went to um, the Yale School of Drama you know, lots of important mentors there, but probably the one of the most was Ming Cho Lee, who really yeah. taught me kind of the the dramaturgy of of design, and um, and so um, and Michael Loker, who's our director of design at the Alley, who I I brought here from the Bay Area from Cutting Ball, he um, you know he he trained with Ming as well, and we so we kind of think in this um, similar way about about design and how design affects the show. But probably the most important year of my life was um, spending a year in Europe on a Fox Foundation grant to look at productions of Shakespeare in, um, in translation in France, Germany, and Italy. And so I got to, it got to see, and by the time, and Paige and I were there together, we were already married, and we, um, we wound up going to 13 different countries, seeing theater all over Europe, and that was a big influence on, on both of us. And when we moved to the Bay Area, we wanted to start a, a theater company, kind of, drew, you know, and, and sorry for the long. That's <laughs> okay, no, that's, no, that's we wonderful. Want to know. We don't but know. I'm so jealous right now that, you know. <laughs> but, but, but kind of looping all, all, all these things. So we, we were, we, you know, our mission was to do um, experimental new plays, um, seminal avant-garde works, and, um, uh, um, re-envision classics. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in, in Europe, the approach to, you know, they do the same classics again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And and the audience, you know, especially like in a place like Berlin, you know, yeah. they when they see Richard the Third, they've all seen Richard the Third eight times. And mm -hmm. and and what what the reason they're going is they want to see what Ostermeyer is going to do with Richard the Third. I mean that that the event is how is the director going to approach this work? And right. and so so that kind of innovative 
exciting approach to classics um, is something I, I wanted to bring to, to Cutting Ball. I was also, you know, really, really inspired by a lot of um, interesting writers that, um, you know, I went to school with, but also um, um, Mac Wellman was a teacher there. So mm -hmm. I always liked his work and, and his, you know, people like Liz Duffy Adams, you know, were, were um, you know, schooled by, you know, taught by him. And then of course, um, Richard Foreman was a, was a big influence. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. um, you know, but the first show we did at Cutting Ball was, um, my head was a sledgehammer. Um, we, um, we, we got a, um, Paige was teaching at a Catholic school and they had a, they had a garage they let us use to rehearse. And we, we, you know, I, I had to stay up all night in the Tenderloin um, in line to get in the Fringe Festival. So I had to, like sleeping out for a concert and I, I had to stay, um, you know, sleeping out. And, and it was like $450 to get a slot. And then I think we spent like a hundred dollars on the play. Yeah. You know, we, we, you know, uh, Richard Foreman let us do it for free, but we, um, but, but yeah. sets, you know, I, 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 I kind of cobbled together the set and I, and the costumes and stuff. And so it was probably a, you know, $600 show. Mm. Yeah. And it, but it's, you know, we all have really fond memories of it. And, and that was our start. And, um, and so that's that. And so our, our role in San Francisco was always to be kind of the, the most left aesthetically. So the most experimental, yeah. the, the, the most niche, right, in, in, in San Francisco. Yet at the same time, and this kind of is kind of one of the things that brought me to Houston is we, we were in the Tenderloin neighborhood um, and the Tenderloin neighborhood Tenderloin is a nickname. It's actually the um, it's the um, theater district. Mm -hmm. It's the is, is the real name for it. Um, but it's where San Francisco put all the homeless shelters, all the soup kitchens, all the methadone clinics, and so it means that there there's this tremendous stress on this one neighborhood. But it's also one of the only affordable, you know, one of the few affordable places to live in in um, in San Francisco, so it meant there were a lot of immigrant families there, a lot of um, you know uh, lower income families, middle income families, um, and and um, it's it's one of the most diverse neighborhoods in the world. They, they speak seventy four languages there, and even though we were this kind of experimental theater company, we felt more and more of a responsibility to reflect our community and I'm kind sure. of talk to our talk to our community and have um, have our shows speak to their experience and have have them, uh, um, you know, the the people who live in in the neighborhood um, come to our shows. So that that became more and more of of what 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 we were doing, while still being edgy and experimental. Okay, that's enough. Ah. There you go. Boom. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I, I'm, I'm glad to know your history uh, to that to that degree. I think that that was that's fascinating to me, and and so eclectic and so rich. Uh, and of course you're where you are. That's uh, it's so perfect to me that you have brought that kind of knowledge and education and world experience to Houston. I'm really grateful that you're here. That's oh, not right. just because you're a wonderful person, which we all know, but because that's really important for us to have that wealth of, of experience and education and, and excitement you have for, for diversity and bringing things to multiple groups of people. I'm really that really warmed me to hear all that. That really means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to ask, what, what were some techniques that you used um, to, to get people from the neighborhood, from the Tenderloin District, to come see shows at Cutting Ball? I mean, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking about, gee, come see a Strindberg play, Immigrant Family. What, what, I mean, how, how did you do that? Well, there were, there were num I mean, it was lots, lots of different le levels. Um, the, the most successful thing we did is we did a show called Tenderloin um, by Annie Elias. Um, she, she wrote it and directed it. And she interviewed um, people from the Tenderloin and like some key players, you know, uh, um, you know people, you know, kind of community leaders, but also um, um, people, living, people living on the street, um, you know, people, you know, who run a small business and, um, and so, um, and it was kind of in that, in that, 
you know, Anna Devere Smith, um, Tectonic. I was just going to say Peter that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of, that kind of way. And, um, and so, so that, that was, uh, that was the, that was the most successful because it was about the neighborhood. And so we would, we would have ways of offering, um, sliding scale tickets, free tickets, okay. so, you know, free tickets to certain groups so, so that they could, they could come. Uh, but then we were a block away from this um, amazing church called, um, oh, we still are, um, even though I'm not there. Uh, um, it, it's, it's, I think they're celebrating their 22nd, you know, Cutting Balls is celebrating their 22nd year this year. So, I mean, or 21st year this year. So it's, it's okay. exciting. Um, but um, we're, we're a block away from Glide Church, which is um, this really, really um, uh, diver very diverse, Diverse, um, very, very welcoming, very dynamic church with lots of lots of singing, and um, and it's 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 a really cool place to be. I mean, every you know when you when you're in the um, to Tenderloin, people say, "Oh, you haven't been to Glide yet? You go to a service." Mm -hmm. They're like, "You're you're not religious? Doesn't matter. Just go. You just go. You've got to experience it. It's such a great." such a great experience. And so we would start, we, we formed a relationship with them. Actually, one of the characters um, in, the, in the play was a pastor at, at Glide Church. So we, we um, kind of created a relationship with her. And, um, and then, um, th then they, they would have, whenever we were doing a, a show that kind of spoke to the community, um, they would um, invite us to, um, you know, come up, um, you know, on, on the stage um, at the church and, and do a piece from, um, from, the, from the play and invite people to come. So that's, that's one thing that, you know, it, and it was a range of things. Then we, we um, you know, I was just, at, we just did a watch party um, with um, a group we collaborated with called um, uh, Campo Santo, um, which is an amazing um, theater company that, that came out of a production of um, Santo y Santos by Octavia Solis. And they, they've, they've been around for about 25 years. And, um, and Sean San Jose wrote a play called Superheroes about how the CIA brought um, crack cocaine um, to our neighborhoods and what what that did to, to the neighborhoods, and um, and that's another play we brought to we brought to Glide, and and people from Glide came, and then <clears throat> on the other side of it, I directed um, Time of Athens, which is Shakespeare's um, play about income inequality, and we really um, we did it in a way that really talked to the fact this was my my last year. Um, and, it, it, and the tech communities were already really encroaching into the tenderloin and, 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 and kind of moving out businesses and, and um, moving out families because they, they, they were starting to gentrify um, mm. the, the tenderloin. And so mm. um, Timon experiences life as a very, very rich person um, and then also as, um, as someone who's, who's a homeless person. And so we 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 used um, um, time in of Athens to kind of explore these two extremes in in our neighborhood, and in some ways, kind of the hypocrisy of the of, of the gentrification that was happening. So so yeah, so that's kind of the rate all the way from new plays to classics, you know, talking to the community. Yeah, that's really smart ideas. Yeah. Well, uh, before we go any further, we should say that Adriana Bear from Portland, yes. Oregon says hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hello, Adriana. Yes, that's nice. Uh, 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 yeah, Adriana. Um, so when, uh, we'll, let's talk about Adriana for a minute. Okay. Yeah. So cool. She, um, I, so when I did um, <laughs> my head with the sledgehammer, uh, um, she says, uh -oh. I, yeah. uh -oh. says, uh oh. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I thought um, in, in order to found Cutting Ball, I needed a, a day job that, you know, because Cutting Ball wasn't going to pay me, and cutting ball, cutting ball didn't pay me for seven years. Yeah. Um, so I needed to have a day, a day, day, we wanted to start a family, so we, we wanted health insurance. So I looked into teaching, and um, I, 
uh, I got a job at Marin Academy, which is a, a wonderful um, independent school in, in Marin. And um, my, uh, my last round of interviews, I, I had to get through Adriana Bear. She, she was she, 15, she, seven, 16 year old student. And I had to, oh. I, 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 I interviewed with Adriana and I passed the oh, test. Right. And, 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 and I, 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 so I, I got to teach her for a year and she, um, she directed a production of Spring Awakening. Yeah. Then she went, she went to Sarah Lawrence. When she came back from Sarah Lawrence, she became my associate artistic director of the Cutting Ball Theater. Yeah. And she's, she's gone off to um, Portland to run the Profile Theater. And so she's, she's, um, she's doing amazing stuff in right. Portland right now. Well, we're new acquaintances and she's lovely. And, um, and was she yeah. scheduled, she's to, scheduled to do Sense and Sensibility, correct? You, yes, that's yes. exactly right. She's exciting. To... Well, I'll have to have a conversation with you about that sometime, Adriana, because I I directed um, Pride and Prejudice, and I'm friends with Kate, so she I know Hamel, Kate Hamel, 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 yeah. and um, we did. I did the Pride and Prejudice uh, show down here, so someday we'll have that conversation. But yeah. she's lovely. Right. I've said well, we we've got to we've got to get sense and sensibility back that's to the alley, and that's, that's what we're all we're all figuring out during these COVID. What what. What shows, you know, how are we going to do the shows that we've already committed to, so. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a beautiful show. We were fortunate yeah. enough to see the original and be a part of that experience, so I would love to see what you guys do with it. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm really interested, and I, I um, this is a question that we didn't talk about, but since we were on this vein, you know, you just, you just described what you did at Cutting Ball to reach a certain audience that you felt uh, was your community. And here you are in Houston, Texas, in downtown, which is a kind of a changing neighborhood now, and uh, I'm not even sure I have a good feel for what downtown is like these days. Well, I'm 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 here right now. <laughs> That's where I'm living. I'm I'm two I'm living two blocks from the theater. Oh wow, wow! So which is great. Um, what, would you be willing to talk a little bit about what you're thinking about as far as? trying to reach it, um, or if you feel that, that you need to reach a different kind of audience than already attends the alley. Yeah, for sure. Or if you have uh, a vision for the theater, is there some, I mean, I know they, you know, if that's part of what your pitch was when they hired you is a vision and change and transformation or, you know, what that involves. Because it feels to me like what you've planned seasonally and the things you've done have already felt to me like a more, uh, a shift in, in programming and, and vision, which I find exciting. So, well, thank yeah, you. speak to that thank a little you. bit. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when when I interviewed um, at the alley, you know, I, I did my research on Houston, and one of the first things I watched was Anthony Bourdain's show about about Houston, where he went he went to the um, Indian community, he went to the Vietnamese community, he went to the Black community, and he just mm -hmm. um, he you know one of the things he said about the show is. Houston is really, really cool. Houston's an amazing city, and it and uh, it it got me really excited uh, uh, about Houston, and and of course I, I I immediately started thinking, you know, oh that you know, I um you know you know there's Viet Gone, which you know which we did do, uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, and, it, which is which is an amazing it's amazing play, and of course um, what what a great way to connect to the the Vietnamese community, um, the Asian community at large, but also to give you know I, I work um, closely with Mary Sutton, our um, our uh, education and community en engagement um, director, and we we kind of talked about you know where 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 do our worlds connect, and we we talk about well, well, we have a common mission to broaden perspectives, meaning. Um, you know, to, to broaden the, the people, you know, the, the, the audience of the alley, you know, people who maybe didn't feel like the alley was for them for many years, bringing them in. But yeah. then the people who've been coming to the alley year after year, uh, um, how, do we, how do we show them more yeah. than what they've, what they've seen in the past? And of course, uh, a lot of people, um, you know, who've been coming to the alley for years, um, they were just delighted with um, with Viet Gone because they said, "Oh, I, I, I thought, you know, what, you know, 
I mean, if you had gone one, it's, there's so much to love. It's so funny. Um, yeah. Oh, God, look at you. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so funny. Um, it's such a, a sexy love story. Um, but then it has this twist at the end. And, and what, what everybody came up to me and said was, wow, I, I, I thought I knew what I felt about the Viet Vietnam War for years, for years. I thought I, thought I had my opinion about it. And I, th that, that show just, it hit me in the gut and yeah. it really, it changed my thinking, um, which I just feel like that's, you know, that's, that's like a double win. Yeah. And, that, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm, lo I'm looking for double wins. I'm looking for um, ways, ways of making our current audience delighted and excited by what I'm doing. And then ways of bringing in new audiences and making them feel welcome. You know, we also did, Tierra Nuevo, mm -hmm. which was our first um, Latinx play yeah. on the Hubbard stage. Um, but then it's also in the, it, like we did Bear's Tale with, uh, you know, with a, with a family of color at the center, you know, yeah. the, the king and queen and the, and the kids were, um, were actors of color, uh, you know. So when we do Shakespeare, you know, it's kind of, and, and this, is, this is something I learned from, you know, the, the actress who played, um, um, Hermione, um, uh, Tiffany Rochelle Stewart, who's just not only a wonderful actor, but just a brilliant, brilliant uh, person. And she said, you know, the important thing about doing um, Viet Gone and doing, um, and, and, and doing Quiero Nuevo, or do, we, we were gonna do American, which we still are gonna do, um, Good, which, yeah. you know, by, by um, um, Tisa Hutchinson, um, right. is, is that, you know, those plays are great to get people in the door, um, but then when you do something like uh, Winter's Tale and have a family of color at the very center of the show, you start, she, she said to me as an African-American woman, a uh, black woman, she said, you start, to, you start to tell me, oh, maybe this is all for me, not just the one mm -hmm. show, but this, the, every, maybe everything you're doing is, is yeah. for me. Well, we couldn't that, and that, more, right. Yeah, that, and that's the message that, you know, that, that I'm hoping to, um, you know, put out there with, with, with our programming that, that, you know, we'll, we'll do some things that are, uh, um, to, you know, meant, you know, meant to be a special invitation for a, for a certain community, but then making sure that we're, we're following up with, with more, more things like that, but then also having, the representation across the season feel like oh I see my I see myself I see myself in this Shakespeare show I see myself in uh, Murder on the Orient Express you know yeah. these, these kinds of things yeah I agree I think it's um, a really important and it's even more important now I think uh, in in you know when we've been really uh, it's been made very clear to us the actual um, battle we have with systemic racism and with how embedded it is in our communities and in everything and, and that we have to really pay attention and, and the fact that that's something that hopefully a lot of us have tried to grapple with and now it's right at the forefront I think is really important you know I know we've done some you know the same kind of thing with the Shakespeare we did Winter's Tale as well and we had uh, two white parents and an African-American you know black daughter and uh, we're just like you know whatever we have Latinos we have big mixed race cast and we think that's very prevalent and important in Shakespeare particularly so Mm -hmm. it's timeless and it doesn't make any difference. We just did Glass Menagerie with a uh, black actor playing the son. And, you know, uh, I was the mother, so I was Amanda. So, you know, we just think it's not, it's not an issue any longer. We, we should reflect ourselves as eclectic families of, of um, how we look in the world. And, and I think that's great that you're finding that to be a really important Damn. message to put out on the stage. I think that's yeah. great. I, I want to say too, you know, on a tangent, your, your willingness to engage with the theater community, a different constituency, mm -hmm. the fact that you're sitting here right now talking to yeah. us, and the fact that I sat in an audience with you at Classical Theater Company and watched Peer Ghent, mm -hmm. and the fact that you came to see our production of Realistic Joneses, and the fact that I, you've made an effort to go see, I think, uh, at least a show at pretty much Everywhere. every professional theater in town, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, that is, Rob, you, you just don't understand maybe you do understand, that's huge in this town. Yeah. Um, because it didn't happen before. 
And um, uh, we're really grateful. And I, I want anybody who watches this to know that you've done that and, and that it's being seen. Well, it makes us feel like we're a part of a community where our flagship theater, which is the inspiration for all of us as artists, believes in who we are. And yeah. that, is, that is a priceless gesture that means more than anything that you could ever do because we didn't understand what we meant to the theater that we all admire and look up to. And to know that we <laughs> no, have meaning you. is- Thank you. Very moving. Yeah, so really thank cool. you for that and making wow. that an important part of your mission and what you do and that we see that and yeah. we, we appreciate it. Well, so. well, thanks. Well, you know, I have to say the feeling is, you know, it's, it's, it's mutual because I, 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 I love, I love Houston theater, but, but I think I, I think what I re really love is I, I love tech theater because um, I feel like, you know, and you know, uh, my Bay area friends are gonna have to for, forgive me uh, because I feel like, you know, the, obviously in the Bay Area, they're talented people, they're oh, great yeah. people, they're hard, hardworking people, of course. At the same time, there's something about the West Coast that it's art is about self fulfillment, it's about self exploration, it's about it's about what's what am what's in it for me, what am I doing, right? And yeah. and and yeah. something about something about Texas, and I think it's because of your, your the Texas One Act Play competition. There's a feeling in Texas oh, of when when I'm on stage, it's about me doing my best. I take this seriously. I'm, uh, you know, it, it's because you know Texas funds their theater programs like they fund their football programs. You know that you and know they that, do in that, high that, school, that, absolutely. Yeah, that that it's like this. This is serious stuff. This is high competition. This is that. This is your time to shine. And so, so I just feel like when I go to Texas, you know, when I go to Houston theater, I see people who are really doing the very best they can do and, and, you know, really bringing their best work. And so I, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, all, all my times going to um, all, all the theaters in Houston. So it's been, it's been, it's been fun. And, and I think, um, yeah, I think, I think, you, you know, one of your questions you had asked me is, you know, what what's lacking in 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 Houston, and I I think it's the the thing that's lacking in Houston is for, you know, more the national scene needs to know more about what's happening here because I feel like it's it, it, you know it's not um, it's not known how good these it, these theaters are, the actors are here. Yeah. I mean that's that's the other thing, um, you know. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of theater communities. Um, you know, again, every every city in America has great actors. You know, yeah. but it's um, but sometimes the pool is very shallow, and and you know, Brandon Weinbrenner, our you know wonderful associate yeah. producer and casting director, you know, he always brings actors in um, to the alley, and we could we could cast many you know many roles we could cast eight local actors and and have it be great and that i mean that's really that yeah. speaks a lot to the the cat the cat the pool here it's it's yeah. just a lot of really really talented hard-working actors so I, I i look forward to the day and i hope i hope I, you know in my position i can help out with that that when people talk about oh chicago and 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 oh the bay area or oh seattle they 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 also start to say oh in the Houston scene yeah amazing. you know because it is amazing it just yeah. we, it needs it needs more light um, shined on it I agree I agree I've I've been on that cheerleading team for a long time <laughs> thank you for getting on board <laughs> yeah yeah um, we, we, there's a message here from Holly Barreto who's uh, I think you've been interviewed by her and she's a She's been a friend of Fourth Wall for a long time. And, and this is actually a good way to talk a little bit about something we were talking earlier about a thing you changed with your acting company. I'll let you talk about that. But her question is, uh, she says, I'd love to hear Rob's thoughts about why repertory companies matter to reflect their communities and be places for working actors. So maybe some thoughts on that and, and, and make sure to tell people what you did that, to change the structure with the company. 
Yeah, fabulous, fabulous. Well, um, we, something that uh, I think a lot of people don't know is that, you know, historically, acting companies are the norm, right? That's, you know, yeah. so Shakespeare, if, if, if somebody talked to, wanted Shakespeare to talk about his theater, right? Um, you know, he'd probably say the globe is the building where he does shows, but his theater is the group of actors with, you know, Richard Burbage and, and, and you know, the, they called themselves the King's Men and before that the Lord Chamberlain's play, players. It's the group of actors, it's a company of actors. So, you know, and he wrote plays for those actors and Moliere wrote plays for the, the, the Comédie Française you know, company of actors. And, and in Europe today, you know, they're, they're heavily subsidized by the government, but they, they have full-time, you know, um, a actors who, who are there. Mm -hmm. And um, there are so many reasons why it, it, it makes sense, um, you know, from, a, you know, and, and there's another thing T Tiffany said when she was doing, um, uh, when she was playing Hermione, she said, whoa, these actors, you know, they go from show to show to show to show. And um, they, um, you know, and that just takes a special level of endurance and, um, you know, uh, you, you know, you know, malleability. And, and you really, um, you really exercise your chops by doing, you know, um, our actors do, you know, at least five shows a year and not to mention readings and so that and yeah. they're constantly working with each other and they're constantly you know um you know they're they're um they're, they're getting they're developing a vocabulary and a way of working together um and audience starts to really see acting right because the problem with hollywood is everybody just typecasts they you, you're just you're just cast to play yourself Right. And so, so, and that's why we, we have celebrities more than we have actors, right? So, mm -hmm. so we, you know, we just, get, we love people because they play themselves, um, where, you know, um, at the alley, you get to see, you know, Elizabeth Bunch transform from this character, to this character, to this character, Todd Wake, you know, this, this character, you know, um, you know um, Sean, you know, um, yeah. Sean Hamilton, uh, David Rainey, you know. I've got to mention them all, Dylan. You know, That's right. All we, we love them all. We do. Yeah, we, we love them all. We adore yeah, them but all. They, but, but you see them, you see them play um, different parts. Jay, you know, um, different parts every. Um, For such. You know. Yeah, right. Show. I know. Chris, um, Chris was in our and, very um, show ever, that we ever produced was Chris. Yeah, Chris yeah. Was in ours. Awesome. So we love them all. But yes, you right. Yes. We, so you know, you 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 see them transform, and that's. That's so much of the fun of, of acting. And then from the community standpoint, and, and so, then, so then they're your celebrities, right? They're, I mean, you know, but not, they're not celebrities. They're working, they're, they're, they're artists. They're artists who you go to the grocery store with, you sit next to at PTA meetings, you know, you, you, they're, they're, they're in, they, they are in, uh, in your community and they, they, um, they reflect the community and, that, and that's that's something you know where you know I, I i wanted to do my first season um but um you know i felt like the we, we, is to add to the add to the company and bring more diversity to the company so that uh, um when you look at the resident acting company the alley theater it looks it looks like houston it looks like the the demo, demographics of, of houston um, but uh, if, what Phil's uh, mentioning is, you know, I, I felt like it was important that the actors um, become become full time employees of of the alley, not not paid. You know, uh, and, and and this is this is actually how a lot of American theaters work. Is that um, you know the um, they, they have companies. Well, th there aren't many theaters with companies left, but right. the theaters with companies, it's kind of like you know, hey. Um, you know, when we've got, we've got three shows for you this year and you'll be paid when you're doing those shows. And then I guess figure, you know, figure, figure the rest out. out. Yeah. And, and we, we just, um, you know, 
part of my whole interview process, and I, and I love my interview process, um, every single person told me the thing we love best about the alley, and you know, one of the things we love best is the resident acting company. We're so proud of our resident actors, right? And, and, I, and that's something I, I believe in a resident acting company. I feel like that's so, so great. But I just felt like, well, if, if that's the thing we believe in most, then our, our resident actors should be full-time employees. They, they shouldn't have to worry about kind of piecing together a, you know, a, a, a living and that they should, and, and that we should, we should have, um, we should have the benefits of having a company. Like, you know, today we were working on Medea to, you know, and, and not, not for any showing. We, you know, we, we may do it, you know, soon. We right. may do it on Zoom. We don't know, but, but because we have a resident acting company, we can, ex we can take a week and explore uh, Medea together. And, and that's, you know, that's the luxury of having, having a company. And, and, and that's, you know, I find that's what actors want to do. Actors. Oh my you know, God. Actors, yes. Yeah, yeah. Actors love being on, on stage and performing, but they also love having, uh, you know, a week just to, just to explore something without the pressure of, um, with, coming up with something, but just, mm -hmm. just being able to stew on something. And that, and that's something I really believe in and really, really enjoy with the, the acting company. Yeah. There's a question from a fellow named Michael McGinnity, a local um, guy. And he, this is, you've already answered it a little bit, but he says, since we can't have live theater right now, how are you staying creative? Are there any new virtual things you're thinking about to keep theater enthusiasts engaged? So you, you started to talk about a little bit what you're doing to be creative, um, but, yeah. but can you talk a little bit about? Uh, I know you you can't announce you're you're not get ready yeah. to announce a season yet, but I, um, we're curious about you know what what you are going to do in the in the sure. coming months and um, yeah, no, that's great, great, good, good, good question. Um, you know, it's funny you say I can't announce a season yet. I've I've announced the season three times. I've just we keep we keep saying on, some things. I don't know what they mean, but yeah. On Friday, I'm going to announce the season again. Yeah, there we I'm, go. Getting, I'm getting really good at annou announcing. Right? <laughs> We're getting some practice at the best way to do that. But uh, yes, I know. But but the cool the cool thing and and uh, our general manager uh, um, um, Brandon Kahn, um, his his um, thesis at Columbia was on um, the moment in NFL history when um, um, when they started to float the idea of what if we televised games? And of course, everybody was like, no, we can't televise games. No one will buy tickets to come to the stadium. Are you crazy? If you can just sit at home and watch, you know, watch the game at home, nobody will come. And so, you know, he, his thesis was all about, you know, um, you know, the National Theater and, um, oh. and Met, Met Opera Live and how, um, how doing stuff on stage and digitally at, at home can complement each other, and 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 so, you know, it's been it's been hard to do in the past because the the contracts for digital were were kind of cost prohibitive. Mm -hmm. um, but um, when COVID hit, we, um, we you know the the unions all gave concessions to to help the theaters to say, uh, you know, oh you're you're having so 1984 we opened on Wednesday. And and got shut down on Thursday, right? And so so the unions were, were you to release this digitally, and we'll make it we'll make it work for you. And and yeah, um, nice oh, there's shot. there's I did it for thank you. Ooh, yeah, I was really I I yeah. I, I, lo I love this this I was, I was proud of the show. Um, but yeah, it, it, so we had previews of an opening night, and that's it. But did. John Chris, the wonderful thing. Yeah. We had made a decision early on. Clifford others did this. Wanted, and he wanted to do it, and so he said, "Can you please? Uh, can can the actors have microphones? Would that bother you if they had microphones? Because if they have microphones, I can be more aggressive with sound. The sound design, because it's futuristic and it's 1984. Yeah. And I said, "Sure, aesthetically that makes sense." Well, once we decided we were going to film it, all of a sudden the fact that everybody had their own mic made it so that you have to hang a microphone in the center of the theater and just take what comes. We were able to take everybody's individual feed and mix it. And, and so the sound, is, I mean, it's like 
movie level sound, but it's wow. it's uh, it's theater, and and so we created this really great film of 1984, and we released it for two weeks, and we're we're thinking about releasing it again. So if you missed it, oh, yeah. kind of keep, oh, good. keep, oh, good. keep up, yeah. keep up good with the website. Good. But but we wound up having people all over the country. Um, so like 48 states, people in 48 states saw it. We got oh, a review really? in the Wall Street Journal that we would have never yeah, gotten otherwise. That. It was great, yeah. People, and 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 there were people all over. There were people in Germany and Brazil, you know, uh, so all over um, watching oh. watching this show. Um, so I feel like this this you know the you know we haven't figured it out yet with you know how to make it fair for the unions, how to make it make sense for us. We're work, we're working on that. But now that this door is opened, I, I, I hope we find a way um, of, you know, like the Met Opera, like um, the National Theater, um, having, having a way of sharing, you know, making great videos of our shows and sharing them beyond the Houston area, or just simply, you know, maybe you live in the Woodlands and can't get a sitter that night and you don't want to yeah. miss an alley show, you know, that, you know, to have that, um, that ability is important. But so, then, yeah, we're, uh, well, you go ahead. I was going to ask you a question about that in terms of, and you can finish your thought too, but do you have any suggestions for theaters that are more like our size or, or small theaters in terms of uh, how they might get funding or build relationships with people to build, to make good small films of their shows? Because it's one thing to be the Alley or to be the National or the Guthrie and be able to make a film. But for somebody like us, you know, we think about it and we're like, well, how do we even afford to begin to pay to make a quality film that we can pipe out into the world that we feel like it represents the show and the talent and the ability that doesn't look like some canned little, um, yeah. you know, streaming, you know, archival, archival video that we yeah. made that we don't ever want anybody to see. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great question. You know, I, I think there, you know, of course, you know, John is is top notch and he's 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 amazing and so he's wonderful, um, you know. But but I, I remember at Cutting Ball we had we, we we had people even when we were that small because we what was it we we got a SAG we we got a grant our our Strindberg plays mm -hmm. um, we had um, a number of we we had Harvard. Michigan and UC Berkeley say to us, "You're we, we were doing these five Strindberg plays that almost no, no one ever do, does yeah. the chamber plays um, mm -hmm. as a marathon. And they said to us, um, th these these um, universities, they said, you know, we, um, we want to be able to, sh you know, because we read these plays in our classes, but nobody ever gets to see them. Mm -hmm. and, and if you could, if we could find a way to record this, and put it on a website um, that would be amazing. We would we would use it for years and years and years. Yeah. So so we actually got a we had to go through SAG. Well, the actors were equity, so that they were equity for the well there the, the were there there were um, some equity actors, some non equity, um, and but but we had, they they were on equity contracts um, for the theater um, production. But then they on top of that there was a SAG contract for everybody and, and distribution we, yeah and we did the we did the filming and then we got this grant to have the um these videos hosted in perpetuity um on this cutting ball strindberg site you can see them today you know they're they're, wow. they're all there and, and yeah. we got um a, you know a great um you know great filmmaker in the bay area to, to do it all so, so yeah the, the, so coordinating, so with, get so some coordinating with other people is probably a really good solution yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you know, your pick of your pick of material there is key, which is you told an amazing story when we first met at lunch about being in a building where some of those plays or one of those plays was set. Does this ring a bell? This is, this is right. This is, you're willing yeah, to yeah, tell. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> this was a really this was a really cool thing. So so you know, I I fell in love with these plays a long time ago, and and Paul. Um, Paul Walsh, um, who was the dramaturg at ACT, now teaches at Yale. He's he's a, he's a wonderful. He's a, he's a translator, and he um, 
he, you know, I, I directed his production, his translation of um, Hedda Gabler, and um, and you know, I knew I, I we shared a love for, for Strindberg, and so we we commissioned him to to translate. He had already translated Ghost Sonata, but we, um, we which is the most famous one. Oh, Andy had translated Pelican, but we had um, we commissioned him to translate the remaining three. And we did that over three years. And then we got a grant from um, the um, Barbara Osher Pro Suecia Foundation at, to do all five in, in rep at, 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 um, you know, the, um, at the cutting ball. And it was, dur it was for the 100th anniversary of, of, of Strindberg's death. So it was a big Strindberg centennial. And, and um, there was an international conference at UC Berkeley happening and so they came over and saw the plays, and we 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 had a marathon. We had Swedish meatballs. It was it it, it was great. And um, the the head of the uh, um, the um, Strindberg because Strindberg had the, the these plays were written at the end of Strindberg's career. Um, he he had a life in Germany and and in Paris. And um, he came back to Sweden, and he was um, a famous international playwright. And these students just got out of drama school, and they said, we want to create a Strindberg theater. And he said, great. What I'm interested these days is I'm interested in intimate theater, cha chamber plays. It was the kind of a new movement going through, um, going through Europe, which is don't don't do plays in thousand seat houses, do plays in 100 seat houses, 200 seat houses, do, do things that are more intimate. And he said, that's the kind of theater I'd, I'd, I'd like to be a part of. And so they did all of his plays and he wrote five plays for them. And, um, and his last play is, called, is a Christmas play, it's called The Black Love. And he had just, um, he, had let, he, he, he had gotten a divorce from his wife. He had moved to this new, um, high fangled, you know, apartment that had all these new technologies, an elevator, a telephone, and, um, and, and he wrote a play about the building, uh, you know, so one scene takes place in the attic, one play takes place in the nice apartment, another play takes place in the foyer, another play, another scene takes place in the basement, and so it's about, you know, this kind of vertical thing, <laughs> and and the theater, the theater had done um, like 60 of his plays, but then they started to do other playwrights. And he said, no, 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 listen, uh, this is the Strindberg Theater. We don't do other playwrights. <laughs> and they said, well, no, but we've done, we've done all your plays. We, we think it's gonna be a good idea to do other the playwrights that have, relate to you and stuff like that. And he said, I'm done. You know, as Strindberg, <laughs> he, 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 he had very intense relationships. Yeah. Every, Every relationship just, you know, ended yeah. at, at some point. And so that, that play about that apartment, that, that apartment building was never done at the theater he wrote it for. Oh. So, so I directed it in San Francisco and I got the opportunity, this was right before I came to the alley, I got the opportunity to um, direct it with Swedish actors oh. in, in the theater, it was the fir first, it was, um, 110 years after it was written, um, and I took the cast to his apartment because his apartment's a, a, a museum now. So we got to touch the things that are spoken of. It like the, the, they they talk about an ice chest, uh, you know, uh, you know, and and we got to touch that, and we got to the desk, the table, all all the things that he talks about. We we got to be there and yeah. and and so it was it was really an oh, amazing right. experience. Yeah, I love that story. Yeah, Thanks. Thanks for great. repeating it for for whoever's. Yeah, watching. our very first play uh, for Stark Naked Theater before we were Fourth Law Fourth Wall Theater was a Strindberg. We talked about it. Yeah, it's, we talked about we did. Uh, a, it was debt collectors, but we 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 translated adapted it. and we called it. Uh, well, it was creditors. Yeah, and we creditors. adapted it. That's an awesome. That, I love that play. I, 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 yeah. I, I, that was the first Strindberg play I ever directed. It's, oh, it's, and you know who else was in it? Was one of your company members, David Rainey. Oh, that's so it was the three of us. The three of us played. Oh them. my God, that's amazing! Oh, I bet it. Let's I bet. You, I wish I could see it. I bet you guys were. It was, it was really it was fun. A, it, was it was in a, a little show. tiny theater that's yeah. no, that's no longer, no longer around. with us here in town, but it was really neat. It was a neat um, little show. So.
uh, we, we have a few minutes left. There's a, there was a, a question from our friend Sally Burtonshaw, um, and she wonders, basically, can you, um, are there any online productions that you've seen in the age of COVID, if I may call yeah. it that, that you can recommend to people that you liked? Yeah, oh, many, many. I've been seeing a lot. Yeah. I've got to say, and I don't know if it still is up there, but I think it's Stage Russia, and so maybe it's still available. They had a, a deaf company um, do Three Sisters, and oh. it is it is the best Three Sisters I've seen in my life. And it's wow. it's not silent; it's almost silent. But there's mm -hmm. some th th there's the sound of shuffling, but they're signing, um, and it, it, it's so the acting is so good. Wow. Everyone everyone is is amazing. That that production that that's been my favorite thing I've I've seen, and oh, wow. um, and I think it's Stage Russia. Okay. Uh, I'll be, you can look it I, up, send it to you. And then um, I'm trying to think what uh, what else. Um, you know, uh, Robert w Robert Wilson directed th this is um, this is a show I wound up missing. Um, it it was he he did um, the Black Rider and. Um, it, it 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 was a play. It was a, it was a collaboration between um, William S. Burroughs, um, Tom Waits, and Robert Wilson. Yeah. And it's it's an adaptation of the 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 Freischutz, um, the Free Shooter, a, a, an opera, uh, a German opera, but based on like a Grimm's fairy tale. And um, and it was it was uh, um, Robert Wilson's first uh, collaboration with the Talia Theater um, in in Hamburg. And they brought it to um, they brought it to Am, and my whole class, you know, uh, all my classmates went to see it. And I just, I think I, 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 I didn't didn't have yeah. enough money. I don't, I don't know what it was, but I didn't go. And 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 I regretted it ever Aww. since then. And I saw this remount at at the at ACT that was a different cast, and it was it, it was great to see. But but the original the the Talia Theater was showing the original and that that was that was amazing too. So, so those two things are uh, uh, cool. I guess uh, we should try to wrap up. Is there anything that oh we skipped that you want to talk about? This has been so fast. It's been wonderful. <laughs> I Thank know. You for being a lovely lovely host. Oh. It's a, you know, it's so you're. You're so easy to talk to. Well, Thank you're you. just wonderful to have on board here. I wish we could be in the same room. Is there anything hey. that we didn't Soon. ask you? Like, why didn't they ask me? You know, yeah. I don't anything know. You can think of anything you want to say about. Oh well, just all, 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 you know, all, all our um, theater lovers. I can't wait to see you. Um, in the theater soon, and sure. thanks for thanks for sticking with us. Oh, and I didn't finish so. So, oh, yeah. you know, we're putting, we're putting a 1980, well, we, we put 1984 out. Mm -hmm. We're doing, we're doing lots of work on Zoom just for ourselves. Right. And, and we're, we're starting to figure out, well, what, what of that, what might we want to share with our audience mm -hmm. so that, so that they can um, kind of see what we're up to. And, it, and it's Zoom, so it's kind of workshoppy and it's just, um, just getting a sense of, of the play where, where 1984 was fully realized, but I still still think, you know, Zoom, uh, uh, you know, real feature of Zoom is that it, it's it's cheap. It's it's not like it's a reading. I, I I've been saying, you know, there are a lot of plays, um, you know, Strindberg plays, yeah. um, Euripides, uh, Ibsen. There there are plays that the Alley hasn't done, you know, ever. That that I feel like it'd be great for our audience to get to know. And so we're kind of um, we're kind of looking yeah. at those. So we can look things. forward to um, and also some of that being available. Some, some reading. I I hope so. We're yeah. the, we're going through the process of now figuring out what 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 should we share. And of course, our wonderful director of new work, Liz sure. Frankel, has has ideas for some mm -hmm. new work to 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 um, to develop online and, and share. We're, yeah. So I'm looking forward. to and that's that's great. Yeah. And I think we're kind of doing the same thing for Michael who asked. We're still figuring out what things we think are are exciting. We we love this the weekly interview where we get to talk to everybody in Houston and a few national people. But I like you. We're kind of deciding what's actually a good experience for people online where they get an exchange on Zoom or through talking where they're feeling educated and engaged. It's like yeah. it's not gonna be nineteen eighty four. We're not going to be 
taping a, a live production right now. So how can we both best find something that's in that world? And my strategy yeah. is actually to drag my heels on this and, and hope that a vaccine <laughs> happens. Yeah. And we don't have to do anything. Yeah. We'll be back in the theater. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You know, let me, yeah, you know, I, I'm the same, I'm the same way. I've got, you know, a whole bunch of articles come out, right? Every, every week. And, you know, like one article is like, this is going to be 10 years. Right. And one article is like, there are three different vaccines that are possibly going to come out in December. And of course, I just latch on to the, you know, December. Three vaccines it's in coming. December. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that, those are the, that's the article I really like. 10 you know, years? Like, January, we can do it, yeah. we can do it. 10 right. years, I know oh, they'll no, be like, okay. we're December. in phase one, you have three years left. I'm like, I, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, right. no, I'm I not going to end on that. No, now. it's not going to be that. It's coming, we're going to be back before yes. we know. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, well. thank you, Rob. This has been lovely. We really appreciate your time. Great. And, Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. See you soon, I'm sure. And we can't wait to see what you do put out. What, yeah, no matter right. what it is, it's going to be great to see all our friends at the alley, too, who we love. Yeah, and it's yeah, respect yeah. and admire. And um, we're very excited. So thanks so much. Yeah, and we'll yeah. end it right there. And thanks. And, and congrats for Realistic Joneses and your award. That's so oh, wonderful. Thank you. I, lo well, I love that show. That. That oh, I'm so awesome. glad. And we were so happy you made it. And. Um, Congratulations to all of you over there for everything you were nominated for and that you won. We read through it all, but I can't remember what everybody got and didn't get. Camp David. Camp David, Camp David got David. this yeah. new, uh, yep. New one. Yeah. So David. congratulations. Well deserved. And yes, so uh, we'll see you soon. And everybody Thank who you. joined us tonight, we appreciate you coming uh, and joining us. We'll be back next week. Thanks. Yeah. Bye, Bye, Rob. Bye. Bye. Beyond the Fourth Wall is produced by Fourth Wall Theater Company. Houston's home for extraordinary performances up close. Each guest is paid for their appearance on this series in accordance with our mission to pay artists a living wage. Follow the links in the video description to support Fourth Wall with a tax-deductible gift or to subscribe to our upcoming 10th anniversary season. And I'm going to start closing down things on my computer so mm -hmm. we don't get any beeps or buzzes while we're right. working. Right. But yeah, no, you... you...